All right, what's up? So I'm gonna be doing a kind of 2020 uh, beginner's guide tutorial and tips for FTL, Faster Than Light. This is one of my favorite games ever. It's a space ship management crew combat roguelite. Um, and yeah, it's pretty uh, overwhelming for a lot of new players when you first start, and it's pretty pretty in depth. Um, so I'm gonna try to just do kind of a a good beginner's guide. I have like 200 something hours in it um, on multiple different systems. So um, yeah, it's on Steam. You should definitely check it out. But let's go ahead and get started. So right off the bat, <clears throat> this is kind of the main menu. When you pick your ship, there are a bunch of different ships. As you can see, I have them all unlocked because I've played the game a ton. But um, you're gonna start with this ship. This is the Kestrel. Um, pretty much what we're looking at here. You can pick your ships. There's layouts. Your starting crew here. Your starting weapons. Um, the Kestrel starts with pretty good weapons, actually. And um, yeah, so if you're first starting out, it's gonna be on normal. This game is very, very hard. It takes a lot of time and effort to really beat the game. So I'd recommend probably starting on normal. But if you think it's too difficult or you want to kind of just have more fun. Um, in terms of like being able to unlock stuff just switch to easy. It's still hard as shit <laughs> So don't think you're gonna get like a cakewalk, but easy is definitely, you know um, Still pretty uh, pretty challenging so that might be good for uh, you know after a couple games to get the feel of the game um, But I'm gonna play on normal. I'm just gonna do the basic ship to kind of show you um, This there was a, a DLC kind of free up update that added a bunch of new stuff um, you can disable it. it, makes the game a little bit simpler in terms of less things, but I would leave it enabled because there's a lot of really cool things like um, hacking and like various other stuff you can do, so I, I would just leave that on for now. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and, and get into it. You can rename your crew and your ship if you want, but I do not care about that garbage, so here we go. <clears throat> the data you carry is vital to the remaining Federation fleet. You'll need supplies for the journey, so make sure to explore each sector before moving on to the next. But get to the exit before the pursuing rebel fleet can catch up. And then a little tip here, you can rearrange your weapons, yeah. So pretty much the premise right here is that we are a ship escaping the rebel fleet. Um, we're actually working for the government agency, which is kind of, you know, a new uh, idea. But we're trying to get to the end of uh, eight sectors and save the galaxy, pretty much. Um, but first, I'm just going to go over kind of the general HUD that you're looking at here, because it is a bit weird and there's definitely a lot to uh, kind of take in. So in the middle here, we have our ship, pretty obvious, uh, top-down perspective. We have our crew, uh, one, two, three, kind of in their different rooms. Um, each room that has a symbol like this is kind of a system that corresponds down here. So we have the engine room with engines, our oxygen, our weapons, our med bay, our shields, our doors system, our sensor, uh, excuse me, sensor system, and our piloting system. Now you can add more, uh, you can get upgrades and buy them. Um, but there are pretty much two types that you can see down here. So there are our main systems and our subsystems. Um, the main systems are quite a bit more important. That's why they're main. But pretty much how it works is each room corresponds to a bubble down here. These are your power levels. Um, and this on the left is your kind of main power grid. So uh, we have a maximum of what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, power. And is that seven? Am I done? No, it's eight. Um, and you can right click and left click to reallocate and as you can see they kind of go up and down um, so you need to kind of get this uh, you have to make a, a nice balance between getting actual power for your ship and then putting it into your systems so <clears throat> you know if you put more into your engines you're gonna have a better dodge chance up here and if you take them out of your shields our shields go down as you can see on our ship and we turn it back on they will charge up and go back up so we'll have to do some power management. We'll get more into that in a little bit. Over here are your subsystems, which are still important. Um, piloting, sensors, and doors. Um, they don't require power from this, from your power grid. They kind of just stay on if you have them here. Um, but sensors allow you to see inside your ship and other ships. Doors um, allow you to kind of fortify your, your blast doors here so that enemies can't walk through. And piloting is like your autopilot pretty much. But these aren't quite as important. Um, here are our weapons, um, kind of glossed over. The, we have an Artemis missile launcher and a burst laser Mark II. This is one of the best weapons in the game, which is why the Kestrel here ship is actually pretty good. Um, pretty much, as you can see, the Artemis costs one power bar and the burst laser costs two. And we have three starting out here. So if I were to get a super powerful, like four power level weapon, I couldn't even use it because I only have three power, even if I depowered these 
I wouldn't be able to use it. So you have to kind of manage that. Um, but as you can see, they'll charge it. We'll get into some combat soon and show you uh, kind of what that is. Up here, we have our hull, pretty much our health for our ship. We lose this, we lose, and we die. This is our scrap, which is pretty much money. Um, so you want to get up as much of that as possible. We have our shields. You can have a maximum of four shield bubbles. Every two power levels here, um, you get another shield bubble. So we want to get that up eventually, but for one, for now, one is fine. We have our fuel, which is consumed every time we make a jump to a new node. You'll see in a second. Missiles, which uh, missile-based weapons like our missile launcher here use. And drone parts, which we don't have any drones right now, but you will get, if you want, and get lucky, you can buy drones like that defend you or attack other ships or whatever. So we don't have to worry about that yet. This is our dodge chance, <clears throat> our evasion, as it says. Um, the better skills our pilot gets and the more engine we have, um, more engine power we have, the higher this will get. So that's good to have. This is our oxygen level. As you can see, if I depower our oxygen, it'll start going down. Um, if that gets too low, you can imagine how that does for our crew members. Not good. Um, and these are our three random crew members. The Kestrel starts with three humans, but there are other races that you can get, uh, different aliens. Um, a good tip right off the bat is save your crew. So then if I move my crew, say he's healing over here, and I don't want to have to re-put everyone back where they were, then you can just press this button or press enter, and they'll go back to where you had signed. So that's a really good feature to, to get um, comfortable using and have, have going for you. <clears throat> Excuse me. So before we jump, this is our ship screen. Um, the upgrade, it corresponds, as you can see, with the, the systems we have. We'll upgrade this with money, subsystems, and our main power reactor. Our crew, not really that important. There's nothing really to see here. You can see their skills. Uh, you can also see them over here. But they'll get more skills based on what they do. It's not really, it's kind of a passive thing. And then our inventory with our weapons, um, drones, like I said, it says system not installed, but you know what I mean, drones, cargo, backup stuff. And then augments are kind of like passive perks. They're really good to get. Um, you can buy them or find them. So hopefully we'll be able to get something like that going. Um, and then the main menu. But yeah, let's get going here. So if we jump, you're presented with the map. Um, I have a mod which is super helpful. Um, it shows how many jumps you have before the Rebel Fleet catches up to you. Uh, you'll see that in action in a second. It's really helpful. I don't think it's too cheesy because otherwise you'll see you just kind of have to measure it. It's really dumb. But we're trying to get here and then once you get to the exit you go to the next sector. There are eight sectors and then you get to the final boss. So uh, let's just pick one to go and we'll launch here <clears throat> and see what we find. So an advanced rebel automated ship remains stationed near a small rebel space station. Sensors indicate it's a storage vessel for military goods. So this is what most of the game consists of. You have events you can pick um, based on what you want to do. So we can either attack it to get to the storage cache or avoid provoking. Most of the time, as a tip, you're going to want to attack things. You know, unless you're really about to die or something, you should always try to get the rewards and get the money. Um, so we're going to attack it. And right away, what you want to do, first tip, is pause the game. Spacebar pauses the game. You can also use middle mouse click, click the, the mouse wheel. This is essential, okay, especially starting out. It lets you think about what you want to do uh, and what you want to hit. So I pause the game, as you can see, nothing's happening. Um, in the same way that our weapons charge up and we have room systems, they do too, as you can see over here. So pretty much we want to just take down essential systems in order to destroy them. Um, their shields are really important. If we take down their shields, we will be able to get through them easier, obviously, and their weapons, they won't be able to hit us. So those are two of the best ones. Um, so what we can do, um, going through weapon types here, I'll do a quick bit brief introduction so that you kind of know the best types. Missile launchers will pass through all shield bubbles. They will just go straight to their ship and hit whatever you target. Um, like you see, you can target like that by just clicking and then click on something else. Um, lasers are one of the most prevalent weapons. They shoot like one to four or five, it depends what the gun is, um, lasers, which do not go through shields. So one laser, if it hits their shield, it'll take their shield down and the remaining two will go through. So they're good and they don't cost ammo like the missile launcher. So laser weapons are probably better than missile launchers in a lot of ways because you don't need ammo. But pretty much what we're going to do here is I'm going to unpause the game. They have an attack drone. This is what I was talking about. This is a beam drone though. They have a beam weapon as well right here. Beams are really good, however, they don't go through any shields, for the most part. There's a few exceptions, but mostly they don't. So you'll see here, he's going to shoot me with his drone. This thing will shoot eventually, but it can't get through my shield. So this ship is actually supremely shit tier because it cannot do any damage to me. So as you can see, we launched the missile, it hit, 
so that knocked their shields down. They're red now. As you can see, their shields are gone. So now we can take our laser and, I mean, normally targeting their weapons is a good idea. We don't really need to because they're not injured. So I'm going to target their piloting. Um, and boom, boom, boom. There we go. So now their health's going down. They're going to try to keep hitting us. Um, something I enabled here is auto fire. You probably shouldn't use auto fire because it can kind of get away with you, especially with missile weapons. But it is good sometimes if you're just like waiting and the, you know, you know, you want your lasers to keep going. So we blew it up. Easy money. You salvage what you can. We got 18 scrap, aka money. Investigate, and the station was abandoned or stripped clean, so there's nothing useful there. So we got some more money here, and um, we can pretty much go. Another tip that I would like to give that I think is really helpful. You usually start with your medbay powered, however all the medbay does is heal your crew members if they're injured. And as you can see no one's injured so we're pretty much wasting power. So I would always depower the medbay until you need it and put it into something more useful like engines. Now we're up to 20% dodge. So that is another really good tip to kind of help manage your power. You really don't need the medbay unless you, well, need it. Okay, let's, uh, let's continue onwards. We'll head down here. Um, something else to consider is... Even though it may, well, here I'll tell you in a sec. Let's let's look here. So, an especially well-armed pirate ship approaches you. Hand over one of your crew members, and the rest of you can go free. So we can either be a complete pussy and give someone up, which is terrible, um, or you can fight. Now, this is a pretty good event because if you fight, there's a good chance this ship will try to surrender. I, this is just game knowledge. I played the game a lot, and they will instead of offering you like money or fuel, they'll offer you a crew member, and that's a good way. So we're gonna fight this ship again. As a new player, always pause and analyze their weapons. They have a similar setup to us. They have a missile launcher, which is going to be dangerous because that'll just go right through our shields. Can't do anything about that. And they have a burst laser, which is worse than the one we have, but still okay. I think it does. It shoots two lasers, so it will be able to pierce our shield for one, and then one laser will hit us. So this is just stuff you kind of have to learn. But um, I'm going to let our missile charge up, and I'm going to launch it onto their... Well, I'm going to launch it onto their shields here. We're going to take a, a hit from them anyways. So it doesn't really make sense to go for their weapons. So they should launch it at us. Alright, so I'm pausing it. Oops, I paused it real quick. Um, we hit their shields, took them down. I'm going to send our burst laser onto their weapons now because I don't want to be hit with many more missiles. As you can see, their laser or their missile hit. It, they didn't target anything too valuable. They just kind of hit an empty room. It did one damage, as you can see. But it did start a fire. So this is where... Um, Kind of the management stuff comes in so i can either send my crew members here to go put it out manually but they'll take damage or um another good option is you can actually open doors and vent out of your airlock like this so i'm going to send my guy out of here so it's suffocate um but as you can see this is now open to space the red lines here mean they're suffocating there's no oxygen in this room and as long as the doors are closed, my crew's fine, but it'll slowly, yeah, as you can see, de uh, deoxygenate. And fire needs oxygen to survive, so it will eventually bend. Meanwhile, looking at the ship here, we did hit them, and we took down their weapons, which is good. They fixed their shield just a bit. The crew, Their crew is in here somewhere. We can't see them, because we only have level 1 sensors. But their crew is in here. They're fixing their shields up. So they got it back online. Now, I could launch another missile. Um, to take their shields back down, but I think it's probably better to just let our laser, first laser here, just go back in and hit them again. Um, so you should notice they are charging their FTL. Um, they're trying to run away. We kind of don't want that to happen. So if this is happening, either take down their piloting or their um, engines, and they won't be able to charge their FTL drive, kind of like how we're doing up here. Because um, if they run away, you get nothing. So I did just say I wasn't going to shoot a missile, but to make sure that they don't run, I'm going to actually fire one off, and there we go, they're down. So they blow up, um, we get slave ships destroyed, they won't continue their evil trade, but many lives were probably lost on the ship. Sad times, but what, what am I to do? So the fire's gone, as you can see, it got vented, we can now press X or manually close all the doors and give it half a second while our oxygen pumps, our machine pumps back, there we go. So the moment those kind of stripes go away, it's safe to, to go back in. He won't take damage from suffocating. Um, as you can see, it's slowly going back up. If we had more oxygen power, we could get uh, get a better, you know, recharge rate. Um, so I'm just checking the map here. Here's another good tip. When you get about 50 or 60 scrap, especially if you're playing on easy, a good thing to do is buy the next la layer of shields. So if you buy one, as you can see, we can't actually get more shields because you need two per shield bubble. 
So I'm going to do that. Now, we don't really have the power to make it work quite yet. Um, we could, you know, kind of do some finagling here, but having two layers of shields is super helpful for uh, a lot of ships because a lot of ships in the first two sectors, again, especially on easy, have weapons that cannot get through two layers of shield no matter how hard they try. And that just makes it so you literally cannot take damage and it makes the early game a lot easier. So get that level two shields as quickly as you can. Um, what I was going to say earlier, it may seem like, oh, yes, yeah, so as you can see, this red is the Rebel Fleet. It'll get closer and closer, and this mod I have, normally it only shows you this one red one, but I have it so that it shows, so you can kind of count. It, it's helpful. Um, I would definitely look into it. It's called the Extended Pursuit Indicator mod. But um, it may be tempting to just make a beeline for the exit and leave. That's actually not what you want to do. You want to try to get as many jumps in as possible because it gives you as many rewards as possible. The more scrap you have, the more resources you have, the more you know chance you have to get crew or f there's free stuff in various events. So you really want to hit as many beacons as possible here before you get to the exit, um, because you know it, it's just going to be better for you in the long haul. Even though you may get in more combat, it might be scary. You know it's going to be better to get just generally stronger. So let's just continue jumping. I'm going to come down here and see what we got. All right, you come out of. Uh, the jump to see laser blast coming from other side, the other side of the beacon. It looks like someone's under attack. So we can stay out of it or aid them. We're definitely going to aid them. Um, and here we have a pirate ship. So once again, I'm going to pause right away. They have a missile launcher, um, which could be a problem, and they have a beam drone. Now the beam drone is, again, not really that much of a problem because it can't get through our shields. However, if they, like, take out our shields with this missile, then we might be in a bit of trouble. So I'm going to let our weapons charge here. Let's see what... Doing, uh, okay, so they launched theirs. They went, they missed. Okay, that's that 20% dodge chance coming through. That's huge. Um, so we're going to launch our missiles on their shields. And we missed as well. Terrific. Um, let's just do our lasers onto their weapon system. All right. So we took their missile launcher down. They'll be fixing this uh, internally. But, you know, they can't do any damage and they're not trying to run. So we're kind of just doing all right here. Um, their missiles are back. I think I'm going to go for their shields again and hope. Oh, damn, this, this ship's got a good pilot there. They're dodging. All right. Wow. This, oh, man. All right. Well, nothing nothing really to be done. All right. They hit a empty room. So I just did some damage to our hole. Not too bad. All right. We took their missiles down again. Um, I'm going to, in a second here, launch a missile. I'm, I'm kind of waiting to time it out with the burst laser. Um, a, a good strategy generally, I mean, we don't have that many weapons right now, but let your weapons charge up to max and then hit them with like a burst of attacks. That way it, it's kind of harder for them to defend against them and fix things quickly. So that's what I'm going to kind of do here. Wait till it's all charged. All right, then I'm going to launch our missile here. And then I'm going to go to number two. I'm using keyboard shortcuts. You, you can click on them and do that, but I'm pressing two. And then I'm going to launch here. So we took their shields down, and now, boom, we hit all three on their weapons. So that's kind of the, what you want to do. Um, and they only have two health left, so hopefully our burst laser can charge. I don't really want to waste any more missiles right now. So um, there we go. Got them. Perfect. So uh, we hastened to, yeah, okay, we got some stuff, and they actually, the, the the civilian ship rewarded us, so they repaired our crew, or our hull a bit, which is nice, thanks guys. Um, perfect, so here we see there's a store, so these, there's kind of two bit, well there's three, I guess, three beacon types that you can kind of see. There's normal ones, which are just who, who fucking knows, like there's anything there. There are stores, which are stores, they sell you kind of between like two to five types of equipment. I'll, I'll go there in a second. Um, and then there's distress beacons, which I'm sure we'll see in a second here, um, which tend to be, I mean, there's various things they can be, but you know, a ship in, that needs help, they're being attacked. Generally there's there's good rewards there. So you do want to try to hit distress beacons. Um, but as for the store, as you can see, we only have 14 scrap. Now you can sell things, but we don't really have too much to sell. So instead what I'm going to do is kind of jump around it a bit to try to get more money before I actually go there. So we're going to, I'm actually going to backtrack to this one because you can see it connects up here. And let's see if we can get any money. Uh, so we're pretty broke right now. All right, they are under quarantine. That is very apropos. So there's not, no event there. Let's pop up here. 
A Rebel space station and single fighter is monitoring this beacon. A number of civilian ships are docked, awaiting inspection. So the Rebels haven't noticed us. We have a bunch of options. We can fend for ourselves, attack and escape, bribe them, or stay out of the way. Well, I'm not in the business of running or losing money, so we're going to fight. Um, looking at them again, they have a heavy laser, which cannot get through our shields as it only shoots one and a missile again. So we're just going to kind of speed through these now. Try to get this done here. They missed. And okay. So um, they hit our med bay and they deactivated it. As you can see, it's broken now. Um, that is not that bad because we don't really need it right now. So if I wanted to, I could send someone over to fix it. I'm not going to because like, I, I just don't really need a med bay right now. Um, so as you can see, I left the auto fire on it, it automatically fired a missile, which isn't bad, but I didn't really need to. So um, that's why you gotta be careful with auto fire. Okay, so here's a surrender. Some ships will offer to surrender. They're giving us four missiles, one drone part and 10 uh, scrap to surrender. Now a general rule of thumb, a good tip, when they surrender, they will tend to give you more of this stuff up here, so fuel, missiles, or drone parts, and less scrap. If you kill them, you're likely to get more scrap and less of this stuff, generally. Not all the time, but generally. So, you know, if you need fuel and they're offering it, you should probably just take that deal. But I'm going to actually not accept their surrender because they're dead now. And so we were offered 10 scrap, we're offered 16 now. So, not a bad deal. Um, before we go to the store, I'm going to try one more here. Or actually, am I? Yeah. So this, okay, so this purple stuff you see, these are nebulas. There are nebu sectors that are fully nebula, but these are kind of random ones that show up. They, If you go into a nebula, it will halt the rebel by half, the rebel fleet by half, so it'll slow them down. However, there are also less likely to be any events here, so you might just waste your time. But um, we'll pop in and see what we can find here. <clears throat> All right, you notice a Mantis attack ship ducking between the clouds with swirling space stuff. It's hunting you. You try to get the jump and move into attack. Okay, so. Oh, we never fixed our med bay. That is there on my part. They have a pretty crappy weapon system. So what I'm actually gonna do is depower our Artemis as well as one out of our engine and get two shields. They won't really be able to do too much damage with that. I don't need the missiles. Um, too badly. I don't mind just kind of, you know, launching in. So, this is another weapon type. Oh, missile, whatever. Another weapon type. This is an ion cannon. Um, they don't do any physical damage, but they disable systems. So, it hit our shield, so it disabled one of our shield bubbles temporarily. You'll see this is counting down now. Um, but if they hit, like, weapons or engines, it would do pretty much the same thing. Okay. So their shields are down now. Um, uh, another tip, enemy ships don't time their weapons that well. They kind of just fire them immediately. So you can use that to your advantage a lot. If you notice, this ship has two lasers and one ion. We only have two shields. So if they launch an ion, they take one layer of shields. And they launched two lasers, they'd take down one layer of shield of ours and then hit us. However, they haven't been doing that because they're idiots, I guess. Um, so, you know, keep that in mind that if you can game the system a little bit... Oh my god, this shit, bro. What are these dodges? Um, so you can, yeah, you can kind of use that to, to get some... Cheese the ships a bit if they're, they're kind of weak. So, kind of talking about races here. Well, while we're just sitting here, I'll send my engine guy to fix this, because... Um, we're not really doing anything. Um, while, while we're talking about races... There are humans, which are obvious. There are mantis, which we just killed some. Um, they're kind of like big praying mantises. There's NG, which are kind of like robot engineers. Kind of like the Geth from Mass Effect, if you ever played that. Um, and there's there's others. You know, I don't, I'm not going to go through all of them. But they all have little bonuses that they, they, uh, they do. Except for humans are kind of a standard one, but they all have slightly different things. Like engineers, NGs repair twice as fast. Mantis do more combat damage, etc. So keep an eye out for that. Um, but here we're going to check out this store. So this is kind of what a, score look, a store looks like. It has... So there's systems, augments, crew, drones. There's also weapons. Um, but it's random. It can be only two kind of sections like this. Or it can be four like this one. And it can be any of them. So you never really know what you're going to get. Um, 
You can also buy fuel, missiles, drones if you need those, and you can repair your ship a bit. I would recommend not fixing your ship up to max, because as you saw, we got that event that they repaired us for two. That event actually repairs for like five to ten. Um, so if we were like all the way down here, they'd fix, uh, fix us up full. So, you know, it really... You don't need a maximum health most of the time, because you can get lucky and get fixed. So I'd, I'd look out for that. Um, as for fuel... I would recommend staying at about 12 to 15 fuel. Um, you know, if you run out, you're not, you don't lose. You just kind of have to turn your distress beacon on and wait for someone to come help you if you get lucky. So you don't want to run out of fuel. It's not the end of the world, but, you know, you should try to keep around 12 to 15. Um, systems here, I kind of talked about these earlier. You can buy more. So drone control, what I was talking about. You can buy cloaking, which is one of the best um, in, this, in the game, as you can tell by its massive price point. Clone bay is an alternative to the the med bay um, it replaces it where if your crew dies they will be cloned and come back to life with less skill points um, as you can see in the description there so it's you know if you prefer that then sure i prefer the med bay generally it's a bit easier just to heal your crew um, but here are the augments or a couple augments there's a ton there's probably like 20 or something in the game um, these like i said are passive perks pretty much that you can buy you can have three at max on your ship these are okay, other than this one. This one is top tier. Here is a huge tip. If you ever see this one, always buy it. It's very cheap at 30 scrap, and it is immensely helpful. It'll give you so much more scrap in the long run. As you can see, it adds additional info about nearby beacons on the star map. Um, I'm gonna buy it right away. I'll show you its effect in a second, um, but it, it lets you get so much more scrap and know what you're doing so much better. Um, here, we can buy crew. You could buy crew if you want. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. You get a lot of free crew kind of throughout the game. Um, you know, if you're only, if you're at like one crew left, you, you probably should maybe. But generally, I don't think it's that helpful to get crew here. And I mean, if you have a drone system, you can get drones. But you can also sell stuff. And as you can see, the long range scanners are just bought went right in here. So I'll show you what this does. All ones near me, it now shows. So I can see that there are enemy ships in these three, and then here there's, well, there, there's something probably, but there's not an enemy ship to fight. And this allows you to, for example, I might now skip this one because I know I won't really get any scrap maybe, more than likely, um, so I can kind of do whatever. Uh, there's also other stuff like asteroid fields and uh, solar, like be near sun that it'll show you. So it's super duper helpful. Um, but what I'm gonna do, one, two, kind of plan out my route here. Uh, I think I might just go up here first and see. So yeah, we're going to intervene to defend the outpost. These are some of the best events because they're what I call double rewards. So um, if we successfully kill this ship, which we probably will, we'll get the rewards from physically blowing it up, like the scrap and whatever. And the refueling outpost may reward us as well. So it's always awesome to try to take these things out. So make sure you always do that. Um, so it's going to move in. It has a laser of some sort, which probably won't do too much damage. I don't think it'll be able to get through our shields. And a bomb. This is a bomb weapon. It takes missiles, um, but it teleports a bomb onto your ship. There are different varieties. So it might... Let's see what it is. We're going to... Let's put our lasers on their shields. All right. So they can't really, yeah, so it's an ion bomb. You can't really tell until it fires. This will, let's see, teleport. Okay, so this is what I'm saying. The AI, like, this is an empty room. It does literally nothing. Um, if they put that, like, our weapons or our engines, that would have been more useful. But um, this is why I said get two layers of shields. This ship cannot hurt us, you know? I mean, it. I guess if it went for shields, maybe, but there's a lot of ships that have, like, a, a, a laser and then, like, a beam weapon, and they just, they can't do any damage to you, so... We're pretty much safe to just pound away at the ship with our laser. And hopefully, yeah, they missed. This is a complete scrub. All right, and there it goes. All right, we got the scout down, automated scout. So as you can see, we got some rewards here. And then sure enough, the outpost hails you. Thanks for the help. We've been harassed by these scouts. Take this on the house. So we got a ton of stuff. Um, so here we go. Here's a distress beacon. Like I said, we could go all the way around. Uh, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five. And as you can see, the Rebel Fleet will overtake us in five. You generally don't want to jump back into this. That's kind of, I mean, it's kind of obvious, but it, 
you can do it. You can go to any of these, but you have to fight a really souped up rebel ship. Um, on <clears throat> excuse me, on easy it's not quite as bad, but on normal and hard it is it is pretty intense. So try to avoid going in if you unless you really have to. So I think I'm actually going to skip out on this distress beacon because it's going to kind of mess me up in the long run. So instead I'm going to go to this and then come down and then hit this on the fourth jump and we'll be safe. So um, for this video I'm just going to finish this first sector. I'm not going to do a full playthrough. I might just do a full playthrough, but this uh, first video is just going to be the first sector. So upon completing your jump, you receive a message from a nearby ship. Greetings and welcome to our beacon. For a small fee we'll let you continue on your way. If you ever do this, you just uninstall the game. You're, you're like, come on. Don't pay them. All right, here is the perfect example. This ship will do one ion damage, take down one layer of shields. This wep this beam weapon cannot get through a shield. We could sit here all day and not take any damage. And this is actually a strategy called, I don't know, call it whatever, I guess, farming or training. This ship is not trying to run. It can't do any damage. So we can just sit here. And as you may notice, our crew is gaining um, skills. So we don't have anyone in shield, so it would be a bit better if we did. But um, we could just sit here and gain experience for our crew. If we had someone in shields, they'd gain shield experience from the shield being quote unquote like hit tons of times, our pilot from dodging things. So we could farm levels for our crew to make them better, um, which is good and worthwhile. Um, it's a bit too boring for me because you know you gotta sit here for like five minutes and just let it happen, however long you want to go until they're. You could wait till they're all maxed out, but you know that's not really my speed. So they're trying to run now. Um, they're not really gonna get a chance. I don't think we're gonna get off a first before. And there they go. All right. Yeah, you can you can train if you're really scared and you want to like you know boost up your ship a bit, but it's it's not really that helpful. So oh, there's some distress here too. Well, alright, whatever. This is for demonstration purposes, so we'll go to, go to the Distress and see what they have. Uh, it appears the Distress Beacon is coming from the surface of a nearby moon. Your sensors are picking up a single life form. So, we can go down to the surface to investigate or ignore. Let's go investigate. Find a colony that seems to have been recently attacked. Exploring the devastation, you find a lone survivor. So, this is where the decision actually kind of matters. You'll get events like this. You know, maybe he's going to, like, flip on our crew and hurt us, or maybe he'll join, or, you know, maybe, you know, there's lots of options, um, especially just starting out in the game, you don't really know. You'll, you'll learn it. But I'm going to invite him to join our crew, and look at that. He states that he was an engineer before being stranded. He happily offers his service for a time in exchange for getting off that rock. So there we go. We got a new free crew member named Charlie. So he spawns up here, and we can send him where we want. I'm going to send him to be our shield guy, and I'm going to save the positions so that I can then reset them. Um, this is a rock, one of the other races. As you can see, this guy luckily came pre-built with an engine stat. So it would actually make more sense to put him in the engines. However, um, why I'm not is because a couple of reasons. One, uh, Fire Dim here is already pretty good at engines, and it's, it's negligible to me. I don't really care that he's that much better. And two, rocks as a race move at half speed. So if I ever need to heal him, i got to walk him all the way over here to the med bay. Whereas if I have him here, it's boom, like he's already there. So... Technically, yes, it would be better to put him in engine since he's more skilled, but it, it doesn't really matter to me that much. Um, so we're going to do one more quick upgrade. I'm going to get another power. This allows me to power up our weapon again in case we need it. Um, and then we're just going to come to the exit beacon here. And uh, this will be our last jump, and then I'll end this video. So a small platform orbits near this beacon. It looks like a fueling station of some sort, and it is cheerily broadcasting reasonable prices in a spectrum of frequencies and languages. Should we dock with it or should we ignore it? That's the question. Let's dock. Um, for nine money, <laughs> money, nine scrap, they'll give us five fuel. This is a terrific deal. So I'm definitely going to take it. Um, we got pretty lucky there. Not, not a lot of negative events. Uh, uh, you can see here, so it says, well, one, there's a ship because of our long range scanners, but this orange circle means uh, there's a pulsar flooding this area, which is one of the kind of environmental hazards. Um, they're mad annoying and pretty difficult to deal with. So. Obviously, we're not going there now, but if, like, earlier on you had a choice, this is why the advanced scanner is so good, because you could avoid that, you know. So, we made it. We're going to go to the next sector, and this is what you see. So, there are eight sectors. Um, you kind of pick a path. There's green ones, which tend to be a little easier. Um, red ones, which are tend to be harder. Purple ones are nebulas. We only have one nebula here. Excuse me. Um, but you kind of pick your path, and you end up here. This is the final boss which you will get to one day. 
but um, they're both energy controlled, which is just a coincidence. Sometimes there's civilian sectors, there's Zoltan, rock controlled, mantis controlled, mantis homeworlds, a bunch of different ones. Um, but you can kind of just pick and choose what you want to do. Um, so we'll just go here, it doesn't really matter. And with that, I'm going to end this video. But as you can see, we are just a whole new sector with new stuff and a new adventure. So um, I'm probably going to make a couple more videos like this um, with some more in-depth tips. But this was kind of a basic introduction to, you know, because like I said, this game can be overwhelming. And, uh, you know, so hopefully that gave some good stuff. Um, if you have any questions, ask me in the comments or anything. Um, yeah, it's a great game. It, it takes a little to get into, but hopefully if you if you got some anything from this video, you'll, you'll give it a shot. It's a ton of fun and unlocking new ships and stuff is super dope. So yeah, that's gonna be it for me. Um, that's FTL, Faster Than Light. Hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you in the next video.